We shall start with understanding the purpose of using a warp deformer to handle x and y transformations. Parameters for x and y angles are designated for moving an object in all directions, up, down, left, and right. For the x parameter, negative 1 is the left and positive 1 is the right. For the y parameter, negative 1 is down and positive 1 is up. Some objects also need to transform their shape, and there are specific parameters for those. The eyebrows, for example. Negative 1 is downward arc, and positive 1 is the upward arc. If all three parameters are keyed into the arc mesh, then each keyform on the shape needs to have x-y direction redone. The x and y movements we did for shape 0 is not applied to shape negative 1 nor positive 1. Thus, the arc mesh revert to default state. Soon we move away from shape 0. With three parameters, each having three keyforms, there are a total of 3 by 3 by 3 keyforms to work on, a total of 27. In comparison, when there are only two parameters, each having three keyforms, there are only nine. The workload grows exponentially to have multiple parameters keyed in one object. Instead, a better strategy is to transfer some parameter operation from the art mesh to a deformer. Make a deformer as the parent of the art mesh, so that the art mesh inherits the deformer's parameter operations. However, be aware that working with a deformer is different from working with an art mesh on a conceptual level. Let's talk about the general concepts of deformers. Deformers are meant to be assigned to separate parts, even when the parts share the same movements. Although it is much less work assigning a group of art meshes all to one parent deformer, the outcome is less effective in representing the three-dimensional aspect of the object. When individual deformers are assigned to each part, there is a lot more freedom for finer control. Adding more detail to the transformation, the outcome is more dynamic. This is how we create a deformer. To make a deformer for an object, first select the object and then click on the Deformer button. This is shown with more detail in the previous episode for creating deformers. When we're making movements for the XY operation, choose the Warp Deformer. For the face, set the number of Bezier divisions to 2 by 3 and then press OK. The strategy for Bezier division settings is as the following. For tall objects, use 2 by 3. For wide objects, use 3 by 2. For balanced shapes, use 2 by 2 or 3 by 3. Division settings can be changed anytime. Simply select the deformer and adjust the values in the inspector. When it is suitable, we can make one deformer grouping up several objects. For example, since all the small pieces of the eye transform all together when the face turns, we should use one deformer to group up all the eye parts and operate the angle X and Y parameter. Simply select all the parts. Click and drag the group around to test if all and only the correct parts are selected. We can also lock all the other parts to prevent selecting them. Then, click the Warp Deformer button and make a deformer to be the parent. We can change the boundary of the deformer by holding down the Control key. This would turn the red box into blue. When it is in blue, changes made to the deformer will not be applied to the child objects. Resize the blue frame so that the four inner vertices match the four corners of the eye. Do the same to the other eye.
For the mouth, use a 3 by 2 division deformer and match the two inner vertices with the corner of the lips. For the eyebrows, let's go with a 2 by 2. Align the inner vertex with the center of the eyebrow. Same for the ears, assign each a 2x2 two two deformer to work with. As for the hair, in the previous episode, we have already assigned a deformer for the front bangs that handles the swaying movement. We now assign another deformer on top of it. Select the sway movement deformer, and then press the warp deformer button. Make sure to choose the option, add as parent of selected object. Our new deformer should appear as a slightly larger deformer than the previous one. It is discouraged to have a child deformer larger than the parent deformer at all times. Afterwards, do the same for all the other hair pieces. Depending on the shape of the piece, the Bezier division may require different values. Now. We have all the essential deformers for the angle X and Y movements for the head. If your characters have accessories, those would require their own deformers too. Finally, we can do the movements. Starting with the face, select the face deformer and give it three keyforms on the angle X parameter. Turn off the visibility of the other parts. By moving the Bezier points, transform the shape of the face so that it appears the character is turning the head to the left and right. Objects that are further at the back moves little, while objects in the front moves in a wider range. Do the same for the opposite side. After this, do the same to the other face parts deformers. Just like the previous deformer, the remaining deformers should follow the same rule in general. Wide movement for the front objects, little for the back. This will give it a rough definition. We can further refine the details after that. Observe the transformation as we slide the parameter. This is how the angle X parameter is done. Next, we can do the Y angle. Remember to turn off the visibility of other parts. Angle Y is the vertical movement. Make sure that all the deformers we just did also keyed three points on the angle Y parameter. Similarly, this transformation has wider range of movement in center front and less as it diminishes away. With X and Y done, each of them performs well individually, but when combined together, the face resumes to default state. It appears that we haven't set the keyforms for the four corners. Let's make the four corners. It is not necessary for us to do the four diagonal corners manually. There is a function that completes the corners for us. Click on parameter angle X to open a small menu. Click on the down arrow button for a drop down menu. Click select. All the objects that have keyforms keyed in angle X are now selected. On the palette menu, select synthesize corners. In the dialog, Select angle X and angle Y to be the two parameters, then press OK. Now we can try our four corners. Circle around the parameter field of angle X and Y to see the result. This is all about the deformer for XY movements. The body also has parameter X and Y. Apply the same method to those parameters and deformers. If you would like to get a deeper understanding of the techniques, you may download the sample models to study the details. Until next time!